Hey guys, welcome. Brooks Conkle here with Gulf Coast BizCon. So I'm the founder of BizCon and our mission is to engage and educate entrepreneurs, micro business owners and side hustlers. We just have this core belief that when these folks connect in any sort of fashion through learning together, helping each other out, we just believe that good things happen. So that's our mission. And today I'm really excited. I've got a uh, I've got a guy with me today. His name, you guys won't believe this, is Brooks. It's a special name. I value that name. It's a great name. Brooks Briz is his name. We met about seven years ago when he was coming through Mobile, Alabama. There was this website called Couch Surfing. He was connecting with people that he thought were cool and they were hustlers and he was doing a project. He was riding a moped around the country uh, in, in order to create this project. He changed it and adjusted. We're going to talk about that with him. I don't even want to try to give him uh, an introduction. So I'm going to hop him here, uh, hop Brooks on here with me. And uh, Len, let's talk about that. Brooks, how you doing, man? What's going on? Nice. Hey, buddy. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Heck yeah, man. So, so we met seven years ago. You were going through... You were doing a project, and I remember from that point that I was like, "This guy, <laughs> this guy knows his stuff. He's cool. Obviously, like he has a mindset that's kind of like me. I think, like you know, kind of forward thinking. You were doing a really creative project. Tell tell folks what you were doing then, like what that project was, and then fast forward to now, and let's talk about like you and what what you're doing specifically. So you, yeah. you were recapping it for me. Yeah, sure. Um, so that was before I had become a restaurateur, and I just figured, mm -hmm. you know, because I was applying. Uh, Restaurants helped me pay for uh, undergrad and graduate school. They were something I understood really well. But as I got into direct response copywriting and got to understand a lot of uh, different marketing principles, I was pitching to become uh, the CMO of this chain that had started from scratch. And I found out they had one unit and it was the original founders of Bloomin Brands, which is, or I'm sorry, at the time it was OSI, now Bloomin Brands. But these are the guys that founded Outback Steakhouse, Carabas, Bonefish Grill, Flemings, etc. And I was like, they gotcha. own one unit. That thing's gonna blow up. Uh, and so what I wanted to do is I had a week off, and I was like, I'm gonna ride a moped and see some beautiful places. And I want. And the name of the project was uh, LocalRockStars.org. And I just wanted to write a little, you know, book as to. What is the fabric? What are the trends? What do if there's something in a community that everyone talks about? And I was mostly focusing on hospitality, but what yeah. makes it so special? Is it their building? Is it their people? Is it their product? Is it their community involvement? What makes them so special? And so I thought it'd be unique to ride a moped and to couch surf my way around. And that's what I did. Actually, I think it was 10 days. That's what I did it in. What did you um what did you learn? Okay, so it was a 10 day project. What did you learn the most? What was the biggest lesson you took away from doing that entire project? It could be related to what you were trying to do or, yeah. or to a moped. Yeah. Uh, well, the moped failed miserably. So I was leaving from North <laughs> Carolina. I ended up break, I was losing my mind, and everyone was like, Were you like dumb and dumber? Like when they're going up the mountain in Aspen? I said, That's exactly what it was like. And, yeah. uh, yeah, so everyone thought I was out of my mind, and they were right. And so I finally in Alabama, I was like, dude, I have like, seriously, I have like second degree burns on my arm because I'm fair skinned and I didn't have um, suntan lotion on like an idiot. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it was, uh, it was just super interesting, I mean, to do it that way. And, you know, what I really found out is it can be a culmination of all those things, um, but it starts and ends with people, in my opinion. And a cool building and an amazing product certainly helps, uh, but also just how ingrained you are in the community, the reciprocity when you go to abundantly give and you believe in abundance, man, it just, it, it'll turn you into a staple in no time. And and then later, you know, I learned the basics of rock solid operations from those guys. We kind of talked behind closed doors. We said, why are we shipping all of our money back down to Tampa? And we opened our own place. If you're familiar with uh, Big Green Eggs, we worked with their biggest competitor, Kamada Joe. And uh, oh, wow. so they're big cer ceramic cookers. Yeah, we yeah. had 15 of them indoors. And and it was a wild ride. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, it really helped us uh, define our culture, our products, our people development. And uh, that was super cool too. But now I work uh, online. And if I were to stand up, you would see I'm in my underwear. So, you know, I just, that lifestyle <laughs> was more appealing to me. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Well, so yeah. so talk about so culture. So bring us to 
today and kind of what mm-hmm. you're doing. And, and I know that's a lot of what we want to kind of shape what we're going to chat about, like company sure. culture and also talking about copywriting as well. We kind oh, of yeah. want to talk about both of those things, if that's cool. Um, yeah, but yeah so, so just yeah, bring us bring us in today, like what you're doing now and, yeah. and what you've got going on. Yeah, sure. My primary vocation, I lead the operations and the member experience for a private mastermind called Coffee Accelerator. So we've got people from all over the world. Uh, they they yeah, pay a pretty penny to be part of what we do. But the mentorship, the instruction that's given to them, the connections and the community that we've built has just been really incredible. And we just teach them, you know, a direct response. You need to be able to measure every step of the process. It's not a billboard or a TV commercial. It's just, if I do this, I need to be able to identify the breakage in each step of the process and figure out like your core metrics. Well, here's my conversion rate. Here's where I'm losing them in, um, you know, like card abandonments or uh, this is how long they're staying on the page. But, uh, but really if you've got compelling copy that tells an amazing story and leverages a lot of the scientific components of, the headline, your features, your benefits, your story, your pricing, your bundling, all of that needs to have uh, A-B testing or multivariate testing and you just continually improve and that's what we teach people how to do. So that's good. So let let me ask you this, who who is it that's in, who is joining that group? Is it people that want to be copywriters for other companies or is it the companies themselves that are are joining? Uh, Yeah, three buckets. So. Okay. Employers, employers will come in. Some of them will be really engaged. Some people, some of them just want to be part of the community. Uh, okay. Some of them have employees that they're putting in. So we work, I mean, we have some of the biggest companies. I mean, talking nine figure companies with uh, V shred, Agora, golden hippo and the direct response world. These are some of the biggest players. And um, also you have your freelancers. These are folks that are looking for jobs that just want to contract. Uh, some of them, are just on okay. monthly retainers with our with businesses and or we'll just have other people put in requests. I want to hire the best best of the best. And they know that they've got, you know, this whatever they produce, whether whether it's emails or video sales letters or landing pages or whatever the case may be, they know that they have a community and the eyes of A-list copywriters that are going to make sure that what they're producing is gonna get it's gonna manifest huge results. Got you. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, copy clearly is important for every business, every brand, every, basically everyone. Right. So yeah. in, yeah. in our audience being more, being a smaller scale, probably most likely not nine figure businesses. Right. So like, but they need, they need copy as well. Um, oh, yeah. just in, any, any thoughts or suggestions on, you know, based on what you guys are doing, like what would you recommend smaller companies do? Do you hire someone to write copy? Do you learn how to write copy? Do you do a combination? Do you, you know? Yeah. I, I it's almost like, I think back to when I was, when I first got out of school, I started a pedicab company or bike taxis because yep. I was I in mortgage that. and I, yeah, and I saw them everywhere. And when I was trying to get a website made, so this is like 2009, something like that, like 10 years ago, good God. Um, I looked and I remember uh, Tim Ferriss's uh, four hour work week had just come out. Gary Vaynerchuk's Crush had, had just come out. And it was really, uh, the, it was at the precipice of where, how the world was going to change and how Web 2.0 was going to evolve further and the social web was going to become very important. And when I was building a site, it was like guru.com was out there, Elance, freelancer.com. Yeah, still, there you go, man. I still, I still think it's a classic, man. I still think it it's is. Classic. Yeah. It absolutely is. Um, so Elancer, yep. Yeah. yeah and, and I remember I hired someone um, from the Middle East, and I was like, $5 an hour is amazing. I don't have to learn coding myself. And I would be like, hey, Vikram, in line 47 of this code, like, I need it to say this, whatever. And and he literally verbatim wrote, hey, Vikram, write this. And I was like, I'm looking in the source code. I'm like, no, dude. So to, yeah. I, I ended up jumping on codeacademy.org and I taught myself the basic tenets of HTML, CSS, and PHP because I wanted to be knowledgeable about it yeah. and be able to manage a project, but not necessarily do the work myself. And I yeah. would put for beginners because copywriting, yeah, like you can read books till you're blue in the face until... And it gets complicated and convoluted. I think uh, one of the guys that runs Copy Accelerator, uh, Stefan uh, Georgia, he's just, he's done such a good job. He calls it, his methodology is called RMBC. 
So that means uh, how you do strategic research. So how you look through Reddit forums and YouTube comments and Amazon reviews and look for what people are actually struggling with. Where is their pain? How do you identify that? And then turn that into a solution. And it'll feel like this, this guy or gal is talking directly to me. And it's because we're using the vernacular of people that are just like you from our research. Uh, oh, that wow. in turn turns into identifying a unique mechanism. So that could be something like later, Tim Ferriss wrote The 4-Hour Body, and he was a big proponent of the slow-carb diet, where you know, you're know you basically you're eating a lot of legumes, um, very limited fruit. I don't think fruit's on the – it's very, very small. A lot of leafy greens, a lot of um, lean proteins. And then he also introduced the cheat day, really. Like he formalized that where – he was like, it creates body confusion because if you're eating, you're giving your body just healthy, healthy food all the time. Well, then it'll begin to get acclimated and your metabolism is going to slow down. And so that's that's an example of a unique mechanism where you've tried all these different solutions, but and you've just been set up for failure. This is the unique solution that you've never seen before. And here's why this is what makes it so unique and why you're going to be successful. Uh, then the B is your brief. So that's kind of the overview of what you're your page is gonna your look like, we're, I'm talking about more long form, so like a landing okay. page, for example, and then C is okay. your copy, and that's that's your features, your benefits, your testimonials, your product bundling, all that stuff. It's just, how do you put that in a scientific formula? So I think to be knowledgeable about it's very good, but you know, I just really, you gotta double down on your strengths, in my opinion, and empower yeah. and uh, verify uh, you know, trust but verify the folks that you hire and that you partner with. So you can't just let them. I think, in my opinion, you got to attract world class talent. You need to cultivate that talent. Uh, but then you, you got to get your ego out of the way and just ask how you can serve and get the help. Don't micromanage them. Yeah, you got them for a reason. They do what they do. And um, yeah, like you want to see results, but you have to have very clear cut standards as to where you're going and why. And you got to enjoy working with each other and neither side's going to have a lot of fun if you have this internal locus of control and you feel like you have to control every part of the process. Like it's just, you're setting yourself up for failure. Gotcha. But like, mm -hmm. but something that you said in there is pretty valuable to me. So it's like, it's knowing enough about the topic to at least be able to I think so. have have a good conversation to be able to make a good hire or make a good decision in a product or service or person or whatever and then you know feel good about that decision based on what you've learned I guess through yeah. through that. So yeah, um, it, it can be overwhelming in our our world because there's so many different approaches to it and I just was attracted to what we do because they simplified it in a very simple way. And for us, uh, the biggest thing is to be able to convert cold traffic. And so we spent, gosh, that was back in January. We went out to San Francisco with a gal named Jen Kim. Uh, she's got a company called Platform Pro where it's like, here's how you position yourself as the expert. But she taught us a lot about developing a very simple framework that's transferable that people inherently understand and they can repeat. And so ours ended up being called how, and the H was high converting uh, landing pages. Then our yeah. O was your optimized uh, upsells. So your one-time offers, your checkout bumps, that sort of thing, because the initial purchase has already been made. It's like Amazon. Now I've got your credit card. Well, I need to make, I need to give you the next offer that was, that's going to help expedite your results or will be the next logical purchase. And I want to provide an incentive for you to buy that right then and there. And then W is winning creatives. And so that's your front end ads and your emails that kind of um, help help build the company even further or whatever you're selling. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. So how do people, I'm just curious, just specifically about this group that you're involved mm -hmm. in, how do people go about finding that group? Are people seeking you out or are you guys using your own oh, methods yeah. of great copy and marketing in order to find the right the right client base well, for what y'all are Well, doing? they know, yeah, it's interesting because uh, Stefan and Justin are their names and the Facebook group, the larger, you know, kind of pool of folks that aren't necessarily as established, uh, it, they'll join the group, Justin and Stefan talk copy. And then if they come to one of our events, like we just had one at the Venetian at, right before the all hit in Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, we had a full room of about 200 people. And uh, I, I actually coordinated the entire thing, which 
Cool. That's a very well, very That's large production, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. I respect um, that. Respect for that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, and especially when you're in Vegas, where like your minimum for our lunches, just for example, for the three days was like seventy five oh. grand is what we had to spend. Wow. You know. Gotcha. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that they um, they honestly don't go on a lot of other people's platforms, which is surprising to me because that would be a great way to get get them into our universe. But yeah, they either they join that group and oftentimes on Fridays, I'll highlight our member of the week and just talk about I mean, for example, it's so weird. This guy, he was a literal um, rocket scientist. <laughs> I'm not even joking. So he went to Northeastern up in Boston, super smart guy. And it turns out we grew up 10 minutes away from each other, which is crazy oh, wow. in the DC area. Yeah. And he, man, he just kept with it and he invested in being part of our masterminds. It's not cheap. And he was yeah. like, oh crap. Like, so then his lizard brain starts kicking in and the fear, the fight or flight, um, the, the reptilian brain is like, you can't do this. You don't belong. The imposter syndrome uh, kind of kicks in. But he kept after it. One of our guys taught him how to buy traffic off of YouTube very efficaciously. Uh, and I'm not even joking you. I mean, because he told me his numbers in terms of uh, his cost per acquisition. You know, so what it mm -hmm. cost him to get a customer, their AOV, so their average order value. I did the math on it real fast. And I was like, I'm sorry, you're getting how many customers per day? And this dude's making $8,000 per day right now. I mean, that's like his taxable income. I'm not even joking. And this is a guy who's been doing it for... He said he was he had mediocre results, but because of the community and because of the education and the copy review that we do for people, he just he's hit his sweet spot right now and he's freaking killing it. And when other people yeah. see that that aren't paying for it, they're like, Well, yeah. I want that. How the heck do I do that? And that dude's I do that every Friday and just share the wins of like what they're doing and it inspires people and that that really helps us convert. Gotcha. And now it, so yeah. just so that guy specifically, is he mm -hmm. I guess what everyone's doing is completely different, different products and services, right? What you're teaching yeah. is something that, that, that His, flows in everything, I, which is copy. I, I swear to God, it's a $37 ebook and a $97 upsell on dating and relationships. This is a, that's what a he, rocket That's what he does? Yes. The rocket oh, yes. Very interesting. Okay. I was going to ask you, what's the product? I was thinking something related to science, uh, you know, just no, based on no, that. But no, no, nothing not to do with that. He completely changed past. But yeah, we've got a lot of um, a lot of financial yeah. folks in there, um, a lot of supplements, nu nutraceuticals. Sometimes okay. it's um, consumer goods. Sometimes it's dating. I mean, all sorts of different niches. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, really but the interesting. Tenant, and so... I, I, the only thing I was going to say is like the basic tenets, like base, they're almost the same. And if you know how to write to influence, persuade, and sell, you can do that in anything. You just have to understand the underlying principles. So even if you're not going to become an expert at it, right, or be able mm -hmm. to say join y'all's group or you need to hire someone, do, do you think it's definitely advantageous to study the basic, like you said, the basic tenets of copy and to be just, just to have an understanding of what, you know, what you need? They, we're, we're all salespeople and that's like every interaction that we have. I yeah. think it's very useful from like just your life in general, being able to yeah. empathize and be able to uh, like diagnose almost like a doctor um, to ask the right types of questions and understand how people make decisions. And of course we're yeah. very emotionally driven. Like people like to think, Oh, I I'm very rational. I, I make decisions based on data and, and, whatever, not anecdotes and emotional storytelling, but that's not true. Not <laughs> People true, want huh? an emotion and justify with logic. Gotcha. Yeah. And even it's even hard to like, believe that knowing that maybe it's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to deny it yourself and say, no, not me. Right. I don't, I don't do that, but of course yes, we do. Don't we? Yeah. All right. So 100%. let's, uh, tell me, tell me about culture. So like, you know, company culture, I think is something that's that you're very versed in and kind of passionate about as well. So like um, what, I, I guess I'll let you tell me, just start with like what direction you'd want to go or what you think super important about it or how to, how, how yeah. even to form it, you know I mean? It's, it's it, so. It's yeah, it's way too complicated. So I know like when we were starting our, our restaurant, it was called Kamada Grill and we hired this, uh, the primary financier was really gung ho about this marketing agency and I didn't dislike okay. them. But I just thought, we're a startup. What we really need to do is to get, we don't know what we don't know. 
we need to get in the trenches, work really hard, get our butts kicked and figure it out and pivot accordingly. I like that. But they yeah. were like, no, we, we need to do a brand enlightenment report for you. Uh, okay, what's that? Well, we're gonna we're just gonna <laughs> talk to y'all, and we're gonna we're gonna go through the basic tenets of branding, blah blah blah. It was seventy five grand for that, and I was like, this is such a waste of money. And Ooh, okay, we ended up we ended up uh, basically I didn't I didn't know how to do this. Um, I do I do coach lacrosse in my free time, and I'm super involved with my church. Um, and both, yep. you know. So we've won three state championships uh, back to back to back. Um, both. Well, I lived in nice. South Carolina. Now I'm now I'm in Northeast Florida. Yeah, and I've just congrats, and I got man. To, yeah, thanks, dude. Um, and I was a lacrosse player in college. Got to play in a uh, be in a couple of national championships in the NCAA. And I just saw. And same thing with church. I go to the third fastest growing church in America, and I'm a very big part of what we do on the um, the greeting side or what what we call our serve team. And okay. I just, I really, I've, I've been doing that for, gosh, almost a decade now. And I just identified a lot of the trends of what, what was in the fabric and the DNA of what made it successful. And so I, I share that with, I'm going to relaunch my brand. It's called Clone Your Customers. And I think that so many people go out there and they like come up with a mission statement and a vision statement and all these words on paper, like their manifesto, their creed. And if you're, if it's not simple, if it's not transferable, and if it's not constantly being reiterated on a daily basis and permeated both internally and externally, you lose, you lose track of it very quickly. So what we did at Kamada Grill, the restaurant that we started, is we had our five values up on the wall in our retail center, mm -hmm. and people on, on a weekly basis. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I would either have a not-for-profit, a church, or a small business in the community, and they would say. I love that you put these up there. Like, I don't know. Is this one of the shirts? Yeah. Part of a servant. Heart. That was our fifth. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Nice. That was our fifth. That was our fifth value. Um, we had five of them. Cool. And we just, we made it simple. And then we celebrated um, someone that exhibited that principle that day. And we had little rewards for them. And it just got them excited because they talked about one another. Hey, I saw Peter do this. And that really exemplified the, the share uh, value that we all that we all share and uh, and I've just on a weekly basis like I said I got asked about it and they were like do you have that anywhere I'm like oh yeah I'll give you the PDF right now and just send it and it, it just outlined very simply what we believed in and other people yeah. emulated what we were doing because it was so simple and so understandable and I know with clone your customers I, I have two two base values and one is that it's got to be fun like if it's not fun, don't do it. And two is win. everyone involved has to win. And win is actually a double entendre. I mean, like, I don't believe in zero sum game. I mean that if you have a vendor, you have a partner, the people that you serve, they've got to win. And it's also a mindset of, and it's an acronym, what's important now. Meaning like, if you could focus all of your efforts on one big effort it would make everything else seem inconsequential. So when you're in the moment and you're executing the most important thing, which Tim Ferriss, I believe, coined it the big domino. It's like if you had one gigantic domino, all the other ones in a row, you just push that big one over and it'll knock everything else over. So th those awesome. are my principles that clone your customers. And it's very simple and very understandable and memorable. So you just unpackaged a lot. And, and <laughs> yeah, which is good, which is good, which means people need to go back and they'll have to go back and listen and go back and listen to be able to unpack that. Um, so having the values up on the wall or saying having them be simple, have things be transferable, um, things being yep. fun, I totally agree with. Um, mm -hmm. But so, and, and, and you brought up something before we even hit record, we were chatting and you were talking about if someone was like at a networking session and they couldn't say their company um, like what yeah. their mission was and if they couldn't do that quickly. And I think there was a third item that you mentioned. Yeah. You were saying there was a problem and they were going to have to figure that out really quick to be able to do that. Right. So, right. So I've done a pretty fair amount of speaking. I always wrote on the side and wrote a couple books. Like I started with, uh, you ever seen those yellow books with the goofy black and white characters, the dummies books. Yeah. 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 So, so I wrote one of those with uh, Wiley and which is a huge publisher. And by the time, I'm not even joking you as through the editing process, there would be seven layers of ink. And I was like, I thought I was a subject matter expert, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but one, one of the things that I learned uh, when I would conduct these, um, I did it. I did a lot with not-for-profits because they have such passion, but it's so hard because 
They're always looking for grants. They're always looking for charitable do donations. They're always looking for funding. And right. they have a lot of volunteers on staff. And volunteers are just, they're not being paid. They're a lot less re reliable unless you get them to fully buy into what you're doing and why. So yeah. I would, a lot of times I would ask people, I was like, okay, you got five minutes. You got to go meet five people, learn their name, what the, what the not-for-profit is and what they do. And I, the number, I mean, I'm just ballparking. They would get maybe one out of the five. And that's like, like we're talking about within 10 minutes, you're trying to get them. It's almost like a children's game at telephone, just getting them to repeat back what they just heard and they couldn't do it because it was too complicated. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So meaning there's a, there was a need to simplify mm -hmm. what, and what, what their mission was, what their company, their organization, that, all of those yeah. things. You're just saying there was, there was a need to kind of simplify those things and make them easier. Yeah, um, without a doubt, because they're so fired up about it. They're so passionate. They just begin rambling. They don't have that elevator pitch that – Got you. Like, uh, like what I do with calling your customers, I think culture is like the underlying value – your team growth is super important, which no one has a plan for. But I always capture people's attention when I when I say they're like, oh, I'm doing this and revenue. I have this many customers, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, great. What's your customer growth plan? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? What do I mean? You acquired them. You already spent all that money. Now, how do you strategically increase that value, increase their lifetime value and ensure that they're referring people? They become your brand evangelist. You need a process that you're executing every single day and uh, no one does that unfortunately so that's a great point and i'm with you i see how there's uh it's like having an ultimate plan beyond the base plan the base plan of acquiring right. a customer getting someone to like love what you do or like what you do mm -hmm. now cool how, how are you going to nurture that relationship and continue to give them value someone like me and, yeah. and i don't know if other people are like me but someone like me would see that big picture and get really um you can it's easy to get overwhelmed and all that right and then oh, yeah. maybe Maybe, maybe you never even begin and get the customer, but I guess, I guess step one is okay. You know, figure out the the right process to acquire the customer and then, but don't make sure that you're working on or thinking about or having conversations with someone like you about all those other items in order to continue, continue that, that growth trajectory, right? There, there's three things you have to do. It's very, very simple. It's communication, it's community and surprise and delight them. By communication, I mean that, you should be like you should be communicating with your audience. I think at least five times a week. Fine, you want to stick to weekdays? Great. The problem is that all you're trying to do is pitch, and you're not interesting at all. You're not mm. intriguing. You're not capturing my attention, and you don't have a call to action. So if I go out there and I teach you, something, like everyone tries to teach, they either try to teach or they try to sell, and that's teaching is such a small part. You need to entertain, you need to fascinate them, you need to intrigue them and use like the anecdotes that you have internally or in your own life and be willing to share that, be vulnerable. And uh, that's intriguing to people. It's like, oh, this is something worth reading that I'm looking forward to and that I'd share with my friends. Then when you look at community, I think Facebook groups are the easiest way to do it. You're going the right down the right path. Um, but don't just post for the sake of posting. I mean, it's like you really have to think very critically about the type of value that everyone's trying to accrue. And, yeah. you know, I so really like highlighting someone that's doing something cool, just appreciating them, saying happy birthday birthday to them or happy anniversary, whatever the case may be. Uh, of course, you can be I think interviews are a great way of doing that as well. So bringing other people into your world that have interesting stuff to share helpful resources, articles, like you can corroborate that through uh, BuzzSumo is a great resource. Just put in whatever your keyword is and it'll show you this is, this performs really well with people because it'll show you the Facebook shares, how many people it reached. Uh, that, and that's like Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, like all of them, it'll show you that. So you don't have to guess as to whether that's going to resonate with people because it's already been proven. And then finally, I would say is surprising and delighting them. Just Knowing using a CRM, I use Nutshell, super cheap. It's like 20 or 30 bucks a month per user, but keeping that all organized and just giving them a gift that is not about you, but it's about them and it's going to touch their hearts and minds. So if you do those, th those three things, you've got a rock solid customer growth plan. That's good, man. What, what's an example, the last item, uh, what would be an example of that? Do you, do you have an example right. of kind of via the CRM? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, well, uh, are you talking about the surprise and delight element? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think John Rulin from Giftology, he wrote a book called Giftology, and then that's the name. I believe that's the name of his overarching. Um, I'll give you an example. I'll show you what he sent me. Yeah, sure. All I had was a um, uh, just a discovery call. And so he strategically gifts for all sorts of professional sports teams, huge companies. But so he started on Cutco. Um, and he sent me oh, that okay. knife. I don't, yeah, it says my name oh, on wow. it, but it, I use I, the chef's I, knife. Yeah. Almost I saw that I had an engraving. Okay. Yeah. So oh, he cool. made that, he sent that to me. He sent me, uh, a let, like a really nice felt case with this knife, with his book. And I had no idea that it was coming. Uh, one thing. So gotcha. what I do with our member of the week is I, I don't tell them, but I highlight them and tell their story. And obviously everyone celebrates them, but then I send them a plaque just honoring them without them even knowing about it. That's neat. And, I like it. And a I nice like little, it. nice little, nice little handwritten note. And it just endears people. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing that just to get something I'm doing that to build a deeper contextual relationship. And I don't know, you know, we've got a hundred, 120 folks in there right now. And, um, yeah, you just have to plan that out. Here's something that we think we should give all of our people, but everyone always gives gifts with like their branding on it and you're making it about you and not about them. And so that's super important just to really challenge yourself to think about what would touch their hearts and minds like uh, in our world, because it's a lot of uh, direct response copywriters, a moleskin is something that they will use every day, a journal, something that they'd scribble in yeah. or a nice fountain pen with their name on it. I mean, gifts that they're going to use on a daily basis. So you just have to think about it like that, in my opinion. That's good, man. That's yeah, that's definitely going above and beyond. It's not a, it's not a, a chat ski oh. with the, with your branding. It's, it's, it's yeah. Non-branded is taking it to the next level, right? Correct. Something that it's, they would just value and treasure. That's, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. And like after our conferences, we did the one in Austin in September and then we did the one in Vegas in uh, February, March. Um, we just, we had a great, we had a couple great photographers running around and for all of our members, we sent, pictures of them to them with a nice and what we're going to do in the future. Uh, we had a nice handwritten note that was given to them, but you can just hire someone off of Upwork. I think I'm paying like, I don't know, like a few bucks per, per note, but you're talking about a hundred dollars or $200 for all of our members or something. That's someone with great handwriting, a message from yeah. us that was written to them. And it mm -hmm. makes a huge difference instead because that's, that's a $10 task. That's not a ten thousand dollar task, in my opinion. So just yeah. to write this, send it to us, and then you know we customize it with their name, and then boom, that's what we're sending out. And we but just the value, our process. yeah. But that, mm -hmm. but the value that you're adding with that is is great. Um, yeah, yep. you're making me. Think, I saw an advertisement probably about a year ago. It was a company that it was like a machine, and it actually wrote yeah, handwritten yeah. notes or something. It's super um, expensive. People, oh, people okay. do it. You can find them on Upwork. Like I just put up. I think I got, I'm not even joking you, probably about 60 some uh, applications for it. And you can invite the people that you want to. Yeah, and you, yeah. If they're too expensive, not reliable, or they don't have a great rating, then don't hire them. Yeah, exactly. And if, yeah, if people don't know Upwork is a, basically a global workforce that you can hire. Mm -hmm. Man, I heard a, I heard a radio commercial within the last six months uh, for Upwork. And so they've obviously yeah. grown tremendously. I mean. Um, yeah, they're blowing up. It used to be a company called Odesk. Uh, do you remember yeah. that? I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah. Odesk. I, I had an Odesk account and it became Upwork. I guess it merged or they purchased mm -hmm. like, I yeah, think, they, um, Odesk. Yeah, I think. I think so. Or something. But yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's great. So, uh, hey, plus better to hire a, uh, a a human being anyway. More more fun than a more fun than a machine, right? So I I, that's cool. I agree, man. And and mm -hmm. you can hire. I mean, just going back to your point as to I, just anything that's not you have to figure out what your main drivers are, what's bringing in the most revenue to you. And that's where I think your focus needs to be. And if it's anything outside of that, like what I call my $10 or a hundred dollar tasks outsource yeah. that. I mean, like trying to do all that yourself is crazy. You'll be spread a mile wide and an inch deep and you won't be getting anything done, especially when you're starting. Yeah. Super. So. It, it's so much easier to say that than put it into action. I would say, at least for me and like in my business, it's very tempting to try to do all the things just because you know how to do them. Right. But like just because you know how to do it and maybe you can find the time 
doesn't mean that it's necessarily where you need to spend your time. Right. And so like, man, yeah, you saying that's really valuable to focus on what your kind of what your core, um, your core values are, I guess, or what's most important to, to, to grow. Well, um, what's, uh, what is something that you're just kind of excited about that you're working on? What's kind of something, you know, it could be current project or just something that's even unrelated to what we're talking about, man. Just like what, what excites you right now about something? Maybe yeah. Right um, yeah, I think co- well, the stuff that we're doing with copy accelerator, we're just getting better and better, which is super exciting. Uh, just to see how many wins and how the profound impact that not only we're having in their vocation, but the lives that we're changing because, you know, it, it's not all about money. It's about solving people's problems and actually being emotionally vested in them and, and building mutually beneficial relationships. But man, like when you're making a pretty fair amount of money, it makes uh, life a lot easier, especially when you can automate processes sure. and, um, you know, take, take great care of your family and, and not just, you know, your next generation, but five generations from now to build that kind of capital is pretty cool. Um, so we're having a great time there. I'm rebranding uh, Clone Your Customers. So, you know, I've just, I just finished my contest on 99 designs. I think it was whatever, 300 bucks, but the designs that I got back were so ridiculous. And my, my suite is going to look amazing instead of trying to piecemeal it all together or hire an individual uh, graphics designer. It's just to get hundreds of designs from talented yeah. people from all over the world. Mm-hmm. is so worth it. So I'm pumped about that. And I've just got a huge lineup of folks that I'll be interviewing. Hopefully I'll have you. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Other than that, I sit on the board for a um, organization called coding sharks. So the biggest player is called code ninjas and they teach kids after school. I mean, they're basically like babysitters as most parents look at it but uh, they learn something useful. They're not just playing video games or screwing around or getting into trouble. It's yeah. teaching them a discernible skill set, and they've gamified it so the kids really don't even know that they're learning, and they're with their buddies. Uh, but we just saw huge success from right before COVID uh, hit, and now we're thinking about how do we scale this thing because our, our we just have strategic partnerships in robotics, 3D printing, uh, coding, obviously, and then leadership and time management. So we're having a really good time with that. We have a lot of big players on, and I just think that we're going to do something really amazing because the software that we're developing is uh, beginning to quantify human capital. And what I mean is what they're learning and what they gravitate towards. Like we have an eight-week crash course with a two weeks on each one of these STEM topics. Um, And you have to see what they gravitate towards, but when you're able to scale – uh, when you're able to grade them and say, this guy's really strong here, not as much here, and they can hone in a little bit more focus, that is amazing for college admissions because they are looking for kids that are interested in STEM. It's a lot of it's it's a lot of people coming from all over the world to take advantage of, not, not take advantage, I mean, like be a part of the American school system in higher yep. education. So you have that, the college admissions part. You have... Uh, VC wants to throw money at it because you're div- you're you've got this farm of folks that maybe school's not for them and they're meant to be entrepreneurs and use right. this technical skill set to to develop some really cool stuff mm-hmm. and uh, the kids are just they're learning things that are very valuable and have the imp- have the ability to positively change the world so we're we're so pumped about what we're doing there. That's awesome, man. Any anything that shakes up current educational system excites me uh just because yeah. man for the for the probably for the last 10 years i mean i went to college you went to college i graduated but at the same time that i went to college i knew that like it, look man, like, like i knew it while i was going i was like this isn't the path for everyone yet we're doing it and it's still like currently it's still the majority of what we're you know pushing our young people to I'm not saying that's completely bad. I'm just saying, hey, open up like the eyes of all these young people. Like it's it's not the path for everyone. And like let's get let's let this creativity burst. And I think we're in the middle of something that may speed that up. COVID nineteen, yeah. us being quarantined, education changing. I think some mm-hmm. of that's going to be, you know, sped up. I think. Yeah. Three thoughts there. One, I think this is going to completely change the the emphasis and the importance uh, because a lot of a lot of parents are not going to put their kids back in public schools when this is all said and done they're going to be wary of it and they're seeing the online education they're able to do so much more in a fraction of the time Uh, so that's going to be very very important i also 
you know, coaching in my free time at, at the high school varsity level, I try to help prepare them because I played at that next level. And they're like, oh, I'm getting X, Y, Z dollars from this, you know, private liberal arts college. And I'm like, okay, well, what's your major going to be? And what's the ROI on your education? And they're like, what do you mean? They're like, I'm going to get a scholarship. And I'm like, yeah, $5,000 for a $50,000 school. Like <laughs> you're going to be in debt up to your eyes. And if you're majoring in underwater basket weaving or lesbian dance theory, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to be making six figures next year. You're just not. So I, I really try to help coach and guide them as to really understand where you're going to school, if that's the path for you, because I don't think school is the path for everyone. Um, I mean, because there's a lot of some of the wealthiest people that I know did not barely even finish high school. They didn't care about school. They cared about they were good at selling or they were they were good. They had a discernible skill set that was very valuable to the you know free market. So they made a lot of money doing that. Um, yeah. But yeah, making the, the right decision for school, what your major is, what type of connections, what type of things that you can do there, uh, which leads me into my third point. It's like I took entrepreneurship and uh, small business development in undergrad and graduate school, a couple of different courses. And I was like, no offense to them, but I'm learning from members of academia who have never done this before in their lives. And I'm learning yeah. out of a textbook from someone that's never built and sold a company. Like, what's the point yeah. of this? I, yeah. So. I couldn't get yeah. that either, man. I, I I couldn't get that either in school. Like there were there were a small percentage of teachers where I was like, okay, wow, you know your your resume sure. is pretty pretty cool. But for the bulk, it wasn't right because the training for them is school, and I, I can't blame them for that. But that's that's yeah. how it works. Like they had mm -hmm. to go, and then they had to get their masters, and then they had to go get a PhD, all in the school system in order to teach. And it just Correct. it doesn't add up. Like, like yeah, yeah, to some, yeah, it just, I, it I just, just doesn't make sense. Theory, I, and I even had a guy, um, we had started a, a, a buddy of mine and I had started a uh, e eBay store, which we were selling consumer electronics and he really built the base. So he's freaking killing it. I said, we should do a, a college speaking tour just to, t to introduce younger folks to entrepreneurship and also build brand equity with like, maybe they'll buy from us instead of Best Buy. And I remember specifically one one of the teachers said, I just prefer to analyze business from the ivory tower. And I was like, okay, teach your own. I like to get dirty. I like to work hard and be in the trenches. Uh, there's obviously a lot more safety and security with what he's doing. I know we just have different philosophies and sure. we can respect, you know, how one another goes about it. Um, I just, that's not for me. So. Sure, sure. All right, man. Well, before we before we wrap up, I know I gotta let you go in a second. Is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't? That maybe you were like, "Man, this is itching on my brain." If there's not, no big deal. Um, yeah. Uh, what What do you think the number one problem or obstacle that the audience is facing right now? Um. Well, <laughs> right now, as of uh, recording this, it might be how in the world do I make my next dollar? Because they may be a business yeah. that uh, that sure. has com completely stopped revenue um, for the time being. You know, being in quarantine. But even 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 if that's you know that's the immediate need, and maybe just in general, you know, maybe their questions or their needs would be the same, but they just didn't. Maybe they didn't know it as much, right? Like. So yeah. maybe it's about how to how to innovate or how to, um, you know, maybe, maybe their question is, well, how do I take this leap? How do I get this customer? Um, you know, how, how do I market what I'm trying to do? How do I verify? I, I guess everything's like just kind of yeah. moving to the next step, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. So a couple of thoughts there. Um, in order, it's interesting. The founder of, it's like LegalZoom where he was partnered with um, Robert Shapiro Later, uh, it was Shoe Dazzle, then the, uh, which was Kim Kardashian and, and Shapiro again, and then uh, Jessica Alba with The Honest Company, and he's partnered with them. And they asked him, they're like, what? like, why are you doing it that way? He's like, what do you mean? He's like, the audience is already built in. They already trust, like, and respect these people. Like, why wouldn't I do it that way? Which I think is super wise. And the point is, building an audience around a passion or a problem that you can solve it's like shooting fish in a barrel at that point because you've built rapport, they trust you. Uh, you can do that through Facebook groups or an email list. And if you're regularly communicating with them and providing a lot of value, trying to do it all from scratch is, it's a long, arduous and very difficult process. And um, it's pretty easy to get discouraged and give up when you don't see traction instantaneously. So I think leveraging things that already exist, uh, if you think you have this ridiculously 
uh, unique idea that no one's ever done before. Well, there's billions of people in the world. I guarantee you someone's tried yeah. it. And there's a saying in the entrepreneurial company, you can always tell who the pioneers are because they're face down in the dirt and they got arrows in their back. Okay, so yeah. what that what that means is uh, you really don't, you need to invent a better mousetrap. Yes, I think you should have, as I mentioned earlier, a unique mechanism and a blue ocean solution, but being able to articulate that in a, in a way that's unique where they, or they perceive it to be unique is very, very important. Otherwise you're in a sea of sameness and it's very hard to get out of that. Um, but yeah, building the audience ahead of time, I think do something that you're super fired up about that you enjoy that you can do all day, every day. Um, not just to make a dollar. If you follow that and you are able to emulate proven success, and obviously Russell Brunson has pop, he's made this very popular with click funnels where he calls them funnel hackers, like being able to yeah. understand how they've emulating what they have that's working. And then if you look at different, you can see, you know, like, like let's say their conversion rate is 3% and you see how much traffic is, is going there. Like similar web is a great tool. It's very expensive, but to understand where their traffic's coming from, to understand their ads, their community, and what they're selling and when is is a very good jump off point. If you build an audience and you've got a proven muse that you can emulate, not copy, but emulate and put in your right. voice, boy, you're setting yourself up for a lot of success that way. That makes sense. I mean, that's good. I agree with you. I, so I've never been good at coming up with some new idea i've always kind of wanted to right like it's uh, it's actually on my life list to you know invent some product or whatever and you know whatever uh, I, pitch pitch and sell some product but at the same time everything that i've done or always done has always been seeing success with what other people are doing and i'm like oh wait i like that too that's exciting like why can't i do the same thing that person's doing which i feel like is kind of where you're going with that except mm -hmm. you know just putting your own unique uh differentiator on what that is or um, I'll, I'll give you an example. So this is three, four years ago when I'm working ADL work weeks. I know how to read a PL. I was like, okay, that's great that we have grandiose plans <laughs> of opening 20 units in the next three years, but that ain't happening uh, because it was like a $5 million undertaking. So it was not very prudent what we did, but we were just, you know, oh, oh we, wow. we dream big. <laughs> Everyone says that we can't do it. It's like, yeah, but there's also, you got to be pragmatic and practical in, in your implementation and execution. But I had a regular guest that came in all the time, loved our products. I just got to talking to him all the time. He goes, I'm about to relaunch a nutraceutical company. And I was like, oh, I love nutraceuticals. And then I went to the web and I was like, what's a nutraceutical? Uh, because I was just kind of like these 80 hour work weeks, no exaggeration and sleeping as a hobby. I was like, I have no quality of life. So he's like, listen, I had uh, basically we had these products. It was based on the tenets of what's called uh, blue zones or longevity hotspots. It's basically these there's very limited. There's uh, Nassara, Costa Rica, uh, Santa Mesa, California. Uh, diff uh, there's like nine of them, I think, total. And he developed, and what he noticed is that there was fermented foods in all of their diets. So think like pickles, kimchi, this sort of thing. And at the same time, there was a documentary, uh, Dr. Mosley's his name, that was on uh, BBC. And it was called uh, uh, Lit F Fast... God, it's fast something and live longer. I can't remember the second word. And okay. the and basically what he did is he used his body as a science experiment. And he def, he dis, he basically discovered at doing this, like going to all these different doctors and scientists and whatnot. He's like, if I reduce my calories twice a week, then that was the most efficacious way to lose weight sustainably and to uh, just ensure that he was like the healthiest version of himself. So that's now been coined as 5-2 intermittent fasting. And he came out and he was like, so you need these leafy greens, you need these lean proteins, you need et cetera. And we were like, that's way too complicated. People don't want to make a grocery list. They don't want to go to the store. They don't want to deal with all these hassles, cook, prep, clean, all that stuff. So what we right. ended up doing is we took all the essential, um, we knew they, that they needed uh, a little bit of carbs. We needed protein, we needed fiber, and and we did it all with fruits and vegetables and we put it in you've seen them a million times like the little kid like squeezy pouches like applesauce yep. you know we yep. put it in one of those and it was a different solution to the problem and people that's all they did is that we called it fast blast so we taught them this is what five two intermittent fasting is 
here's what time re time restricted feeding is. That means like, you know, to maybe skip brec breakfast and eat at noon uh, and between like six or 7 p.m. It allows your okay. body to rest and rejuvenate. Uh, so that's a, a scientific principle called autophagy. And it actually won a Nobel Prize about three, four years ago. So all of these things were becoming red hot. And we had a new solution that we were bringing to market. And last year, uh, we were at a $12 million run rate in our se second, third year business. So we grew extremely quickly because of a lot of the things that I talked about earlier, but also because we had a very unique solution that gave them instant gratification. They saw results mm -hmm. and they like right away. And sure, there was some hurdles and we helped coach them and do some different things. But when they saw those types of results and then we were able to have people that lost 30, 40, 100 pounds and they served as the coaches and living testaments to how well the product worked. It was again, it was just like shooting fish in a barrel. I wasn't spending money on ads anymore. It was people telling their friends, their family, their neighbors, their colleagues. This this is how I lost the weight. And it's incredible. And I've never seen a solution like it. And that's how we grew as fast as we did. Interesting. Interesting. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Great yeah, example, thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Well, so how can folks connect with you? Like if you, if people, if people here in this are like super interested and they just want to find out more about yeah. you or about your companies or whatever, like what's, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, I'll be in the group. So I, I anticipate I'm being very active in there. I could use, you know, I would like, if I could, with your permission, I've got it narrowed down to about five different designs. If so, if you all could help me uh, pick out the branding for clone your customers, that would be super helpful. And just, I'll see you in the group, friend me, uh, be happy to exchange info. And yeah, I would love to get to know you. Yeah, cool. No, great, man. Nice. Okay. Cool. Well, Brooks, obviously a guy with an incredible name, man. Thanks for uh, yeah, thanks man. for hanging out and chatting with me today. And I look forward to you know keeping in touch with you. I'm, I'm glad that this brought us back together, man, to get to connect and have a conversation. And uh, yeah. looking forward, man, looking forward to a lot more a uh, lot more connections and conversations with you over the uh, love it, man. Over love the it. And if anyone's yeah. ever in Northeast Florida and wants to hit the beach, our beaches are open. That's that's why I'm tan. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. All right, yeah, man. Buddy. Brooks, I appreciate it, man. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thanks, Brooks. All right. Yes, sir. All right, guys. So that was Brooks Briz. Obviously a great name. If you can't tell, um, really incredible conversation, go back and have a listen to that. If you want to get access to upcoming conversations and speakers that we're going to have, make sure that you hop on gulfcoastbizcon.com. You'll get connected with us. Uh, as well as events that we'll have coming up. Now we have the we have launched a podcast, so make sure that you are subscribed to that. You can get that wherever you enjoy getting your podcast. We should be anywhere that you uh, that you that you search for those and listen to those. So have a great week, and we'll see you on the next conversation. Take care.